such as learned scholars, my friend, brother, Councillor Shafiq, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. I'm very privileged to be here before you today to say a few words. I assure you, I will try not to overexcite you with my great religious understanding, but to try and keep it to something that I know a bit more about, because there are a huge number of esteemed some of the speakers before me, and certainly some of the speakers after me will be able to cover that area. So, what I really want to say here is pass a couple of messages which I think are important, which are important not just to the people inside this hall, but I think first of all to all of our community outside the United Kingdom. And I will start first of all on the principles that our learning sister Professor Nathalie started and the very fine lecture that she gave and the issues that she raised. I think it's important for us to raise the issues of jihad. It's important for us to raise those very important issues. And the issues that she's raised are those great ladies in Karla and the sacrifices that they made. <coughs> they were great, great sacrifices. We are in no way near in comparison to that. But I think we still have a lot of sacrifices to make. And to my knowledge, <coughs> we are not doing that at the moment. That is what I would like to say here today. Because we have real issues that we need to deal with. We have issues with our young people in this society, and we have to address those issues. Because if we don't address those issues, there are two destinations for those young people. One is for those people who are luring them away, luring them away from all tenets of Islam into cre creating crimes against humanity and crimes against Islam. That is a jihad that we have to fight. And the most important people who can fight that jihad are our mothers, our wives, our sisters. <coughs> because they have the first connection with the child. <coughs> And we are losing so many young people because we can't guide them to the right way of our beliefs. And this applies to all of our denominations. This applies to all of us here. That if we don't provide that guidance for those young people, then they will be lured away by those that seek to destroy all of us. And that is really what is important for us to do, to ensure that. The second tier, in respect, is crime. Crime, drugs, and everything else that goes with it. Because of the lack of understanding of their religion, of their heritage, that they will be then pushed towards that. And I think our great institutions, our great mosques, here have a huge role to play in this. I think we need to look at reforming those institutions to ensure that we provide the right sort of guidance. The right sort of guidance that they understand in the language that they understand in order for them to bring them back on the right track. Because if we can do that here, then we can export that wherever we want to. And that is what we've got to do. It's not good enough when we stand and criticize the fact that, well, because this is happening because we're in England and we can't do anything about it. I have seen very, very respectable young people because they've had the right upbringing, because they've had the right support, that they can be even learned scholars in this land because we've given them the right support. So there is a huge jihad for us to take place. And that is to return the focus of those enemies of ours who want to use that. You have today in Gaza what's going on. And what they're doing is that they're blaming Hamas for everything that happens. And what do you do? You have a small strip of land, which is 25 kilometers by 3 kilometers. You push 
one and a half million people into that, and you keep turning the screw. You destroy all infrastructure. You destroy all the police stations. You destroy all the power supplies. You destroy all the water supplies. You destroy all the roads. You have no access to them at all. And then you keep switching on and off the access to them when you feel like it. And that breathes within that content. <coughs> and when you get that content, you blame them for that as well. And so what you do, <coughs> because some person who can't control themselves and go off and does something silly, like throwing a stupid missile across and kills nobody in Israel, you send over 40 sorties of F-16s to kill as many people as you can, using all sorts of banned phosphorus bombs and weapons to do that. And we fail in that. We fail in that is the same way that we're failing in the United Kingdom. Because there is no cohesive power within the Muslim countries. You have the OIC nation of countries, the Organization of Islamic Countries. What are they doing about that? How are we supporting that? So what we have to do is to look at where our problems are and how. This is the great religion. This is the great religion that surpassed all. This is the great religion that produced all of the, all of the new scientific advancements. And what we're doing is being pushed back into the dark ages because the enemies of Islam are pushing us to do that. And that is what we have to change. That is the jihad we have to fight. So I'm not here to lecture on those issues. I say there's a lot of lady scholars before and after me who I'm sure will do that. But from a point of view of a representative, of a public representative, as a member of parliament, as a politician, I think it's my duty to point out those very, very important standard tenets for us to do. I will do whatever I can do to support that, and I have done. You know, a lot of people accuse me of very different things, and I'm very happy to answer their causes, but they will only say it behind my back. I wish some of them would come and say it to my face, and I'm very happy to take up challenges to some of those issues. But what we have to do is to look at how we can address those issues. And I can go back to the original argument made by a learned sister, Professor Nepri, about the sacrifices that are important for us to make. And in this day and age, it's even more important because what was stopped in Karbala is in fear of happening again. Because if we don't stop it, Islam will be wiped out. That's how important I feel that this is. And it's important for us to really look at that and see how we can deal with that. Uh, I thank, in conclusion, I don't want to go on too much with the huge amount of speakers. And unfortunately, I have to go for my dialysis treatment very shortly. So I'm sorry that I won't be able to listen to some of my respected learned scholars here. Uh, and unfortunately, I have to leave uh, very soon. <coughs> very soon indeed. Uh, and I would just, uh, in reply to my sister, and I'm grateful for her, uh, Sister Rabat Rizmi, for arranging <coughs> and giving me an opportunity to speak uh, and to say a few words here today. To say that, in, in, inshallah, if there is a movement and support for International uh, Imam Day, then I think it's important for us all to do it. But you have to take the lead. You take the lead. You get the support of the people. I'll come back with you and I'll be behind you and I'll support you. We can do it. But we can only do it if we have all of us working together to do that. It's not hugely difficult. We have to be united in what we want to ensure that we get it. If we're united, then we can achieve whatever we want to do. I will help, I'll work here as a servant, as a political worker, to do that. I'm no leader in that respect. It is you people, inshallah, who should lead on that. And I'd be very, very happy to follow that. Again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity today. And thank you. And I, please excuse me if I've said anything wrong. Thank you. So I'm